And that was the real reason why I stopped appearing in red letter media videos for so long. It was quite a journey. Oh, hi, Jack. Oh, hey, Mike. Don't mind me. I was just writing in my journal. What huh. are we doing today? Well, today we're going to watch three movies. Three whole movies? We haven't done this in a while. We haven't just picked three movies to watch. Mm -hmm. There's always been some kind of stupid gimmick or some kind of crap. But today we're just watching three movies. No spinning? No spin. No dropping? No dropping. Just picking three movies? Three movies straight up. We're going to watch them first up. A lot of people might remember this movie from the Plinketto board. Mm -hmm. And you have a special story. You discovered this movie, Jack. Th this is when we started doing Best of the Worst, or when you guys started doing Best of the Worst, because I wasn't in the first episode. This was the first tape I brought in as a possible uh, inductee into Best of the Worst. Found it in a little thrift store in Minnesota, Twin Dragon Encounter. Twin martial artists, uh, who is it, Michael and Martin McNamara, uh, I'm so excited. Martial arts action explodes with double deadly force, twin dragon encounter. The, 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 the cover is, is very uh, suggestive, is the easiest way to say it. Get ready for some of the most spectacular martial arts action ever filmed. Mm, it's questionable. Twin Dragon Encounter, featuring unbelievable wizardry of internationally famed martial art geniuses, <laughs> Michael and Martin McNamara. Identical twins who explode on the scene with twice the force and twice the nonstop action. Oh, wow. Okay. They're making big, bold promises. The twins head out for a peaceful vacation when their beautiful girlfriends. So it should be noted that the, the producers, uh, possibly, um, oh, the, the writers, uh, the writers and producers of this movie are the stars of this movie. That's why they have beautiful girlfriends and are genius martial artists. Uh, let's see, but their plans change drastically when a group of weekend mercenaries invade their remote island paradise. So they, so they go on a remote island paradise with their own girlfriends? Yes. So like, they're like the proto Bill and Ted? They just oh. like, they go on romantic getaways with each other and their significant others? Yes. I love okay. it. All right, all right. I love it. When the terrorists kidnap the girls, the twins decide to obliterate the enemy. Since they are greatly outnumbered, they must summon all their courage and apply their deadly expertise in order to succeed against the odds. I have a question. Uh, I'm ready. It's more of a bet. Okay. Involving all three of you. Are the girlfriends twins? Okay, you guys. Be careful. No problem. Grant's our friend. There, there's a lot on the back, by the way, so oh, we're just going to get through this. Twin Dragon Encounter is an extraordinary martial arts masterpiece that combines awesome stunts, staggering fight sequences, and the doubly treacherous McNamara twins to produce one of the most remarkable action films ever made. Unforgettable displays of raw power and high voltage energy make Twin Dragon Encounter a must-see for all those who crave excitement and adventure. Did you fall asleep, Rich? Well, that was Twin Dragons Double Encounter. Is that what it's called? That's exactly the name of the movie, Mike. What are we watching next? American Rickshaw. This is something I've never heard of. Me neither. Oh. It's by Sergio Martino, though. Okay, who's that? Um, I think... directed, do you remember Hands of Steel? Yeah. That's the director of Hands of Steel. Hey, when this die, yeah. The way is the, the way... Take it back. The way that is the way is not the ordinary way. Mm, now that's a memorable catchphrase. What?
after a stripper tricks him into filming a sex tape, <gasps> Scott Edwards, played by Olympic gold medalist Mitch Gaylord. Nope. A Miami rickshaw runner becomes embroiled in the murder of an evangelist's son when he inadvertently takes the wrong videotape. Oh. Okay, so there's a sex tape floating around. He wanted like TGIF, but God. A sex tape with a stripper. Right. On a, on a Miami rickshaw. Yeah. Um, with the help of the stripper and an Asian witch. This is Wait getting a really minute. good. This is getting really good. Wait a darn minute. Uh, Edwards sets out to clear his name while avoiding the assassin dead set on retrieving the tape. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what a rickshaw is. A little cart. Oh, I thought it was one of those boats with the with the fan on the back. What? You, Mike, I am disappointed with your rickshaw knowledge. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know anything. That's fair. Have whoever just contact my secretary. It's on your mobile phone. It could be Jason. Donald Pleasants could not be more bored. No. I'll see you later. Oh, wow. Like, oh. He does not give a shit. Wow. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Look at that grandpa. Oh. Nope. He wandered onto the set. <laughs> horny neighbor. It's all about horny neighbor. Oh, He's he teleported! Him. Was that the same grandpa? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They only had so many extras, so they had to yeah. move them to yep. the other side. For the reverse shots. Mystical teleporting grandpas. I didn't hear anything. Oh god, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Whoa! Jesus! That our next feature film is... Phobe. The Xenophobic Experiments. The 90s DIY cult sensation now remastered on DVD. For the first time. Oh my god, on glorious DVD. This, uh, for looking at these pictures on the back, I am legitimately excited. That light does look slightly dimmer. I think that bulb's on its way out. Yeah, it gets like slightly more orangey. Yeah, you right get before it bursts. Got a hint of dimness. So, well, if the light goes out while we're shooting, can we just be done with the episode? Absolutely. Yes. 100. Yeah. I like it that the you... light will go out, and then by the time you get them on, I'll just be gone. Yeah. <laughs> It'll just vanish. We fear that this 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 key light might go out. Yeah. It's possible. It and looks it, like it's on the verge. If it of going does, out. the episode will just abruptly end mm -hmm. with no conclusion, <laughs> even if we don't get past the first film. I think this Speaking of cool. ending with no conclusion, oh, oh, yeah. this this was my first offering onto the plate of best of the worst. Say, hey, I found a weird movie too to add to the collection, and it's been sitting there enticing us for the past. Decade? We've teased it. It's been on the Plinketto board. On and off the Plinketto board. So the big question is, was it worth the wait? Trick question, no. <laughs> hey, 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 Scott. Leave her alone. Why don't you just mind your own business? Whoa! Whoa! Don't you stand there! Get him! Get him, guys! Get him! Uh, oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah. The story of Twin Dragon Encounters is very simple. Uh, this is the laziest of the vanity projects we've ever seen. <laughs> 
uh, in this which... This is the vanityest vanity project we've ever done. Twin Dragon Encounters is the tale of the McNamara twins who are real-life karate instructors. Once oh. upon a time... I know that saw plastic heroes in the joint. Oh. oh. Men. Real, Real men. Real men. Oh, Who knew the meaning of life? I forgot to those celebrated martial artists. What? Wait, why did so we this get... isn't that pussy Hollywood shit. These are the real guys. Yeah, jumping jack, motherfucker. They they just wanted to impart onto us that they were super strong. The ladies loved them, and they owned a boat and possibly an island. And a kung fu school. Uh, and, yes. And two matching vans. And a poster. And a poster. So, and a poster. See, no, normally in, in the Vanity Project, the guy who sees himself as the biggest badass in the world wants to be like in the action movie foiling this massive crime plot. But this, they, they, they are so full of themselves, all they need is themselves. They don't need to be in an action plot. Mm -hmm. We don't need a story, there's us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. It's like an Adam Sandler movie, they just filmed their vacation. Yeah. <laughs> there's no difference between them either. Like, oh, no, personalization wise, yeah. yeah. Oh, please, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they're both the most badass people yeah. ever. They don't need any other characteristics. I, just for a second there, I thought, what, which which one is which one? It doesn't matter. And, yeah. I was going to say, one could like, always wear a shirt, but he'd never let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go on vacation with our girlfriend. We're going to take some babes and wander around in the woods. And that's our movie. <laughs> I, just, I just spent the last, like, like four minutes trying to formulate a joke <laughs> with with their two matching kung fu vans and vanity project. Oh, okay. And, oh. and you know what? I just so the only thing you came up with is the idea of a joke. Yeah, it just didn't work. Yeah. I'm like, I'm I'm just like this. Nothing's firing in my brain. <laughs> it's been rotted to the core. <laughs> by it's been a rough night. All these movies tonight. Your, uh, your efforts were. In vain. Uh, oh. That took five seconds, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it is a quintessential dual vanity project. Uh, okay. Hi, Mick. Hi, Martin. We don't want <laughs> twins in these parts. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are too wild and rugged for me. I might not make it back. That's right. Oh, those guys are looking for trouble. Yeah. 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 yeah They're just tell. waiting for that waitress to go away so they can make some comment. Yeah. Hey, you better drink your milk and cookies, boys, so you grow up nice and strong. <laughs> the guy looks like a Mack truck. Shut your mouth. Hey, you. Apologize for calling me a Mack truck. <laughs> Maybe I'll drive you. <laughs> Maybe I'll drive you? <laughs> Maybe this is a gay porno. This is how Canadians <laughs> insult each other. They leave in their, their twin vans, <laughs> and then they stop at a diner to get coffee. And immediately, a table of like dudes are just like, mm, yeah. we hate you, we hate you. We get a it, classic Canadian insult they, here. Apologize for calling me a Mack truck. Well, the insult that starts it all is, you look like you drink milk and cookies. That's right. Yeah. They call them like, li they, kept, they keep referring to them as like little boys yeah. or like young men, which I think factors into the midlife crisis. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, hey, Michael, we're, we're the insecurity this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The insecurity, that's what I was saying that at a certain point in the movie, I was like, these two were probably picked on in elementary school. Like, yes. They're horribly overcompensating now. But but the just run of the mill, like, you know, redneck guys at a, at a restaurant are just like insanely jealous and angry at them. They want to insult them because mm -hmm. they're there with their ladies and they're getting coffee and they're all happy. And, oh, they're so mad and jealous because they're so fucking awesome and they have to pick a fight. Did they slow it down because it came out awkward? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Film it off from one wide shot. Wow, they even threw the first punch. I was just about to say that. They are, they are committing battery and assault. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and one, one comment about cookies. They were not in physical danger. These guys didn't even start a fight. They just walked outside with them. Oh, that was so awkward. They slowed it down because it came out bad. Explosive action! Well, this is when we get the dramatic contrast between how awesome these guys think they are and the execution of the actual fight scene, which is embarrassing and terrible. And to be fair, they go hard on the fight sequence, on how awesome the fights are on the back of the box. Yes, yeah. There's lots of hyperbole going on. If oh, they sell it. Get ready for some of the most spectacular martial arts action ever filmed. <laughs> Apparently the McNamaras thought that they were too fast for the human eye to <laughs> comprehend their awesome kung fu moves, so they in post slowed down the footage. You say that. I think it was a desperate attempt to stretch running time. Well, that becomes clear later on that that was an issue, too. Because <laughs> we actually see, at the end of the movie, they still have more time to fill. Yeah, and by the time the credits start, it's like, the movie's what, an hour ten? Something like that? Yeah. yeah. So what they do is, they just condense the movie and play the movie again. This isn't a roll call also. This is just re-showing footage. It's just shots of the movie. Well, you gotta stretch it out. It's gonna be every time they kick someone. This is just like leftover footage. Oh look, it's the fights in- Oh, it's in real time! Oh! Oh yes, and it does look- It looks better! It looks better! Yes, that looked like a normal fight! That was fast, but it looked decent. So you, you get to see every fight scene again, but in real time. Which is a weird decision if you're trying to stretch the running time. You'd think they would just show it in slow motion again. <laughs> or show other scenes in slow motion. Why not? Or show <laughs> them in real time during the movie and in slow motion during the movie wrap-up yeah, after the movie. Yeah, because the over. fights looked better in real time. Yes. They did. They might... I, I don't know anything about martial arts. They might be good at it, right? They're clearly in shape, right? They're good at possibly doing their, their kung fu, but they're not good at translating it into a movie. Oh, oh he hit him right in the head. He kicked in the head. Oh my God, that teenager's getting beat up. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even do anything. He just works at the dock. Oh, this is just... This is... And it's clearly a post-production decision because it wasn't filmed in yeah, slow motion. Right. It must have just looked bad. I don't know. Or maybe but they thought does it, it looked really badass. Look better in slow-mo? But see, okay, in real time, that, that all that would have been two seconds. Yeah. Right. That's when you need like a master director or filmmaker to come in. And they, they went, okay, guys, everybody come out and here's how we do the scene. I kick you, you kick me, and we're done. And then, and then you need a filmmaking, a person with a filmmaking brain to come out and go, oh wait, no. We've got to make this like eight minutes long, right? Right. Because, and then this happens and this happens and you cut to here. If we shoot it from this, this angle, it'll look and, like you're contacting. Right, and then yeah. you, have to, you have to repeat this and this guy gets knocked over a garbage can and he yeah. gets up and while he's getting up, you guys are doing, they didn't understand any of that. They just <laughs> choreographed the scene and they just did it in 10 seconds and it happened and it was over. And I, th I think that's the real case is later on when they put the movie together, it was 40 minutes and, and they stretched that. I'm sure as actual martial artists, the McNamara's are very talented, but like being a precise and technical martial artist does not look cool on camera. No. Um, that being said, they clearly thought they looked very cool. <laughs> So that's why it's funny to Can we us. talk about the, the log cutting scene? There's so oh much oh God. God. Holy <laughs> shit happening on the screen right now. They're cutting wood. Fuck yeah. Cut it. <laughs> we have that same song. Yeah, we do. They're, they're, they're using a rickshaw to cut wood back and forth. They got their they got their foot up on a log and just like heaving back and forth on this giant log, just oh brother to brother, gut to gut. Oh yeah. It doesn't help that they look like every '70s porn star. Well, come on, guys, you want to go swimming? So go swimming. We've got work to do. So join us. There's the water. Swim. 
Why aren't we the gentlemen? Us gentlemen have got work to do. Go swimming. Enjoy it. Come on, Martin. I think they're in love with each other. Good morning. <laughs> well, yes. If uh, Okay, so imagine this. Imagine you're incredibly vain... And you have an identical twin. Yeah, you could you could not be attracted it's to like your ex- brother. Exponential yeah. of, of vanity. And so you know you look at your <laughs> you look at your identical twin and know it's a reflection of you and you just go, you're beautiful. I'm yeah, beautiful. that's true. We're beautiful together. It's like fe- it's a feedback loop. The only person who will meet up to you your standards is another you. Yeah. Yes. And they have another you. But you have to cast girlfriends because you gotta have girlfriends because you're the coolest. Because they're not gay. <laughs> it doesn't count when you're twins. <laughs> just, that's just that's just that's just a uh, super masturbation. Yes. Yeah. But but the the their their overcompensation for their, I guess wh- what would you call? Well, uh, not I guess it's literally homosexual. Well, their their overcompensation <laughs> for. <laughs> What about the guys are still chopping? Is this the scene where you guys uh, chop the wood logs? <laughs> <laughs> you guys want the ladies here for the scene? No, no. just me and my brother <laughs> facing each other. Yes. In fact, can we get the women out of the movie somehow? <laughs> Maybe they get kidnapped. <laughs> oh, that leads to the biggest laugh in the movie. You were out of the room for that. <laughs> oh, that, the ladies yes. get kidnapped and they're putting together the clues of who might have kidnapped the women. Soldier Jake smoked these things. Check the cabin. Our poster's gone. Must be the soldier. (laughs) 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 That got a bigger musical sting than the girls getting kidnapped. That's that is shocking. What happened? You missed the ultimate the ultimate act of vanity. Yes. Because the bad guys, when they kidnapped the women, also went through the cabin and for some reason took a poster of the McNamara twins <laughs> to like poke at and yeah. the bad they, guy. Well they there. kick a they kick a hole in it at oh. some point. Even you know, they're so awesome, even the bad guys can't resist taking their posters. Right. Yeah. Ooh, boy, I got the McNamara <laughs> and, and so they, they figure out that the women have been stolen. You know what would have been really great is if the McNamara twins got kidnapped. Kidnapped, and it was the ladies who had to go save them. A little twist. Yeah. I mean, like you were you were throwing things around about something about finding the the ancient diamond. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. like we're just he was throwing like ideas a plot. For, for a plot. Yeah. I know anything. Uh, My grandfather told me he, he hid buried treasure in these woods. Oh, and then the militia. I, I got the clues to find it, but we got to solve the clues. And the militia says we need that buried treasure to fund our weirdo militia. Oh, we're both working towards something. Fuck no, like. The McNamaras don't even necessarily want to sleep with their girlfriends. There's nothing. Well, we know why that is. (laughs) (laughs) He's literally sitting on his lap. Oh, oh my God. (laughs) It's better for me if I lean back. (laughs) Oh, God. They want to. They want to get their their ATV, that vibration going. <laughs> their their girlfriends get kidnapped when they're out on a canoe ride together, shirtless. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. <laughs> they are not separated from each other. Weird. They're in love with themselves. Oh, they have no personality to distinguish them from one another. Well, yeah. Or yeah. no personality. They are absolutely identical, and I think that's what they like about each other. <laughs> That's what it comes but, down to. And I think that can uh, answer a lot of like this, this movie for a uh, for a vanity project is shockingly chaste. Like there's no like male gaze. Can we cut to the ATV scene again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. That's a problem when that's the most sexually charged scene in the film. Yeah. Is is shockingly heterally chaste. <laughs> like you know usually you'd, like you get a like a, a shot of like the girl taking off her shirt with the bikini underneath. Yeah. It's, it's, it's incidental footage of <laughs> women in bikinis. Exactly. So it's, it's like, like a documentary. Just like just we just captured, captured it yeah. while they're panning the shirtless men. <laughs> Get more shots of my pecs, eh? 
<laughs> every shot of the girl is like, oh yeah, here's the girl, here where she is. Every shot of the McNamara is just like, oh, working yeah. out. It's it's shocking, but once you realize that the only thing they care about is the ass. Mm -hmm. Hey! Oh, hey, this look. is one of those things. This is, <laughs> this, hey, this is your rickshaw. It's a rickshaw. It's a rickshaw. <laughs> oh my what? God. For no reason, on their magical island, they have weapons of war <laughs> hidden under like camouflage netting. Yes. We've got machine guns. We've got an ATV. We've got a tank. We've got, got a, a rickshaw. A rickshaw. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a rocket launcher. Classic water rickshaw. And they even have like camo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now, a classic 80s movie would be a well-armed militia with, with weapons of war, guns, grenades, blah, blah, blah are defeated by two guys and their only weapon is their karate knowledge, right? The, that's and classic. Their, and their ingenuity. Well, but that's kind of, right. isn't that deadly prey? <laughs> classic stuff. But they, they couldn't resist though. We know karate. Mm -hmm. yeah. We are buff. We have ladies, but we also know archery. And we also know guns. Yeah. Well, even the even the one part when one of the girlfriends ends up fighting, we they they very specifically cut to flashbacks of the McNamara's telling her how to fight because that's more important. <laughs> Them explaining the fighting is more important than her fighting. Jay, they also have to advertise their karate school. I guess that's a part of it too. Well, you know, like sure she beat the bad guy, but the real yeah. victor she, was she them beat him because they trained her. Yeah. Exactly, Jack. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They're the real heroes. They're real men. Just like the opening credits crawl tells us. Yeah, yeah, this isn't any of that pussy Hollywood oh bullshit. God. Those pussy Hollywood action heroes, you know, who wear the camouflage and bust out their guns. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that was a <laughs> yeah, contradiction. Yeah, this isn't a movie like that. Can't get away. Okay, bye. <laughs> Fuck you. Fuck your trauma. <laughs> Why did we even come? Get me out of here. What? No. This Wait, isn't gonna be no! A no! What? <laughs> the rest of that summer. <laughs> oh, 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 God! <laughs> that sucks. That's not how you end a movie! Now, I know we've used up a lot of our brain power. <laughs> on this, and we ha still have to go through American Rickshaw. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. I just thought about that. But <laughs> I wanted to bring up one thing. I'm ready. The, the real life Martin and Michael McNamara, That's this right. was an interesting bit that we looked up afterwards, was they, there's a song in the film, it's like a cheesy 80s rock song, Fight for Your Right to Fight. And a lot of their motivation for probably making this movie or, or getting involved in uh, I don't know, media or whatever they're doing, is uh, Canada is it really against like like cage fighting, MMA style fighting, and they they really want people to be have the right to fight. Yeah, and I do, Canada I, outlaws it to this day. Yeah, I don't follow MMA fighting, and so I'm and and uh, you can go to twin-dragon.com right now to read some of the history of their battling the government mm -hmm. for. Or, or try to read it. The website's a little broken. Is it is it Canada or just one specific like province well, that's or what city? I said, Ontario. It's, okay, it's Ontario. hard. It's hard to read, but apparently they uh, there's been some governmental pushback on like regulations for an arguably very dangerous sport. Sure. Um, and they have been trying to fight that. They are fighting for their right to fight. Legally fighting. Yes. Legally. The underlying uh, theory that there's a conspiracy involved in the, the upper echelon of the Canadian government that's stopping 
Canadians from punching the shit out of each I other. I didn't want to legally beat the shit out of someone else in a cage. But but they already have that. It's called hockey. <laughs> 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 Boom. Hey you. Apologize for calling me a Mack truck. So Mike, what's a rickshaw? <laughs> <laughs> It's a really good question, Jack, and now I know the answer. Did you honestly not know what a rickshaw I d- was? I didn't know what a rickshaw was, no. I'm, I'll be honest There's with a you. famous Seinfeld episode where Kramer starts a rickshaw business. I, I, yeah, He's I running know. around New York with a rickshaw. I remember the episode. I don't remember the name. I, uh, Speaking of older men dating younger women. <laughs> yes, there was, yes there was that's true. <laughs> you didn't want to share your birthday, so you burned his ass. You killed him. <laughs> hey, Scott! Don't you say that! Don't ever say it again! Come on, you're strangling me! So anyway, so Rich, uh, why don't you explain American rickshaw <sighs> to the best of your <laughs> to ability? To the best of my ability, I will explain. We, well, this, we went, this is pretty extreme whiplash, because we yes. went from a movie with no story to a movie with way too much story. Yes, it was, it was <laughs> narrative whiplash. Yeah. American rickshaw, oh my god, is the story. <laughs> You can do it, we believe in you. I was gonna say it's about a man who drives a rickshaw, but really the centerpiece of the story is a ancient Chinese immortal witch who is picked up by a man in a rickshaw who was born on 6666, which means he has the power of the tiger. And there's also a TV evangelist who is evil and seduced the witch to steal her magic immortality bull statue, which made the witch become old. What the heck is going on? And then he also had a kid who coincidentally was born on 6666. Only he was evil. He was an evil pervert who liked to film people having sex without their knowledge. On a, on a yacht. On a yacht. And for no particular reason, he decided to steal the ancient bull statue that his father also stole and he put it in a safety deposit box in a train station. <laughs> and he kept the key on a chain around his neck. Preach on, brother. It's all true. <laughs> Everything Preach you're on. saying is absolutely true. What the heck is going on here? And then one day, come on. When he was, <laughs> come on. He decided to film one of uh, his, his perverted films. Uh, he used the, the rickshaw guy to so lure the rickshaw guy onto a yacht. To film the him rickshaw sex. guy found Six out about. Six months ago, he gave the ancient Chinese witch a ride on his ri- rickshaw. My cat and I have watched over you since your birth. And then she sent him an ancient Chinese talisman. Come on. In the mail. Come on. With a note. A note that he never read. <laughs> because his neighbor, who was having an argument with her husband, distracted him. And he dropped the note down the stairwell into the garbage. And I guess he was just too lazy and to go get it. He was too lazy to go down and get the note. And we still, to this day, don't know what the note Rats said. Ate the, note. the evil other son, who was born on the same exact day, who's missing a thumb. Come he on. who's missing a thumb for no reason used to strip to hire her, his rent his rickshaw out to take him to have sex shot with him and film the ancient his Chinese knowledge. witch's cat meowed uh, halfway across town which he heard on the boat somehow and that made him look in the closet and you know he didn't hear the guy in the closet he heard the he cat he still found the evil son in the which closet which caused him to immediately turn around and punch the woman he was about to have sex with right in the fucking face <laughs> And then he just beat the shit out of everybody in this yacht. In which I think, you know, kind of disproportionate amount of violence for what happened. But he beats the shit out of everybody. And then he goes home. Well, no, he tries to take the tape. Oh, he Because he's upset the that tape. they were making a he sex tape without his knowledge. He tries to take the sex tape. But for absolutely no reason, the evil son switched the sex tape with the all-important tape of him explaining what the key hanging around his neck was that opened the locker in the train station to the evil bull statue. But we never get to, we never get to hear the contents of that tape. No. We never get to hear the contents because of that tape. The, the sex tape and the switcheroo tape both are MacGuffins. This is the only thing connecting you to the dead guy. And we're going to make it disappear. What? That's the most efficient way you can think of to do that. (laughs) 
that's gonna smoke. Rickshaw man steals the wrong tape, which was switched out for no reason, goes home, and then his roommate convinces him he has to go back to the boat to get the right tape. So he goes back to the boat and finds out that the evil son has been murdered by hands of steel. At which point, the ancient Chinese lady cat freaks out and the boat burns down with him <laughs> on it. She uses her magical witch she powers to burn the boat? She uses her magical witch powers to burn the boat. It's not sure if this is done deliberately or if her powers were just out of control. It's not clear. What the heck is going on here? What, what ignites the boat, a quick aside, uh, our hero, Rick Shaw Guy, I don't know what his name was. Rick Olympic, Shaw Guy. Olympic gold medalist. Mitch some, Gaylord. Something Gaylord. Yeah. Can we call him Rick Shaw? Hey. <laughs> I approve. Okay, Rick Shaw steps <laughs> on broken glass with his bare feet, which cuts his foot, which causes blood all over the, all over the interior of the yacht. Right. And when witch lady, she's she's psychically connected with him through the talisman, or some kind of uh, he's the Tiger King, <laughs> and, he, and he's got tiger blood, uh, whatever, and. Her psychic powers ignite the blood. Yeah. And his blood is what starts on fire. Yes. But not necessarily because later the witch starts another fire and there's none of his blood. Well, in this specific case, it was the blood that started the fire. Look, this is Any ancient Chinese fires, magic, okay? The unrelated <laughs> fires also caused by the witch's sight. Yeah, okay, powers. all right. Don't right. you bring in a little rationality into this. <laughs> but the, the, the boat burns down then. So then he jumps off a boat right as the cops are arriving to see someone jump off a boat, but they can't identify who it was. Hands of steel is looking for the key so he can steal the statue back for his master, who is the evil televangelist. And so he steals all of the VHS tapes from the boat. And then he realizes, oh no, the, the tape that I don't know why I know exists and that explains what the key is, is missing. <laughs> he didn't know. He didn't know that he made a confession about the key. Why did he make a confession tape about the key at all? <laughs> it never <laughs> comes into play. His purpose, Mr. Thumbless, his sole purpose, is, is he a pervert because he can't masturbate? Because he doesn't have a thumb? <laughs> you can still. Maybe you can still. You can still. He has another hand. I guess so. Yeah, but, but his left one. Well, I mean, come is, on, it's no. not the same. You see, he's an unrelated VHS pervert. Right. They call him a video freak. But I heard that Jason Morton was a video freak. A video freak. Yeah. Or a sex pervert. Is this any relationship? Could have been a sex maniac. Uh, sex maniac. They sex maniac. <laughs> Jay remembers all these things. Uh, yeah, all, any of the, the, the pervert lingo I remember. Video he's a, he's, freak. What he is is a pioneer. <laughs> because I guess porno didn't exist before then. Or he, he had a, some kind of special special fetish about his, his own pervert, like, like voyeur well, he's porn. A, he's a thing for involuntary porn. Involuntary yeah. voyeuristic <laughs> yacht porn. If, if, if they made this today, would he have a website called... Uh, Bang rickshaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another question we had. Is is the rickshaw business in Miami just a front for prostitution? Hey, girls, want to ride the American rickshaw? Hey, babe, ride with me, give you a discount. I'll carry you Mars if you prefer. Bye. See you later. Yeah. Because because the one of the other rickshaw guys is is very like flamboyantly gay mm -hmm. and he's like he's he's approaching people to get on his rickshaw as if like a prostitute would approach a you know a potential a customer John. a John. Sir, would you like a ride? Sure. Take me downtown. Take me downtown. Uh, we know what that means. Scott Edwards is considered a serious and hardworking kid, according to his university professors and the rickshaw pullers. I spent all night with the rickshaw. <laughs> 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 and then yeah. rickshaw guy when he carries stripper girl to the yacht no second thoughts she's just like come on the boat and let's fuck and he's like okay stranger he, she lures him in a little he, he's a little she, she lures him yeah. by turning around and looking at him again he, yeah. does, he doesn't respond like it's like it's like it's uh customary it's it's to, a little to, he's bit. Young, to be fair it's his roommate's nine. job and his roommate can't do the job because his roommate broke his leg. Yes. So Presumably maybe, having sex with someone. Maybe it normally is a sex thing, but but because he's filling in for his roommate who normally does that job, he just doesn't know that Wait aspect. a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's another element to this mystic witch lady that we missed. 
So the witch lady has a magic cat and a magic cobra. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how the roommate broke his leg? I'm just breaking my neck to avoid that friggin' snake. He was running on his rickshaw and a cobra yes. came out of nowhere and he broke his leg so oh, the other yeah. person would have to take over She's for the rickshaw. The so she was pulling the strings all this time. Pull the strings. Pull the strings. Isn't that crazy? And then all she needed was for somebody to get a key and go to the bus depot and open up the locker. Wow. <laughs> that, that's all this whole convoluted plot is all about you, that. You, you think she can't do it herself because she can't walk, but at the end of the movie, she gets up and walks. Yeah. <laughs> or she could have, well, they had to get the key off the neck of the televangelist's sex pervert son. It seems like there'd be a less convoluted yeah. way to do that. So but, the cat could have stole it in the middle of the night. But while also, he's it's a bus depot. That is handicap accessible. <laughs> Probably, yeah. This whole movie's bullshit. Look, it's, it's a lot easier to manifest a snake, to spook a rickshaw driver, to break his leg, so the rickshaw driver's roommate would have to take over the job so he could pick up a red-headed stripper to take her back to a yacht where she would try to have sex with him, where he would get uh, outed by the sex pervert, who he would then steal the key off of his neck and throw it out the window for no reason. So he would have to go back there later and dive into the water to get the key. Only to have it stolen by Iron Fist, <laughs> so then he could pick it up underneath the cat in the bus station. Right, it's right. He's simple as pie. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a foolproof plan. Got a back grocery. <laughs> Got a back groceries. <laughs> Got to pay the... <laughs> Something wrong with this mic. <laughs> According to the movie, the uh, uh, Donald Pleasant used the Boar statue to rise in power. Is he secretly a, 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 de a demon pig? Tell them, Sarah. Tell them I'm the joke. <laughs> <laughs> that was just him clearing his throat. He, to... <laughs> he keeps doing this thing. <laughs> oh, no! He is a pig man. What the fuck? <laughs> Guys! What the fuck? <laughs> Those are great reaction shots. <laughs> I, I think that's the idea. Is just, yeah, he's, he's, he's evil. He's rotten inside. And so when he dies, it, I'm it manifests at it, itself physically. I'm looking physically. at it too literally. Yeah. Look, the important part is that Donald Pleasant starts oinking like a pig at the end of this film. <laughs> That's what matters. And a creepy pig pops out of his skin and it's super gross. It's, it's great. Yeah, yeah, we turn into Videodrome for five seconds. Yeah. After his wife shoots him to death. Yeah. In front of the whole world. And he starts oinking. <laughs> he starts oinking like a pig. Which we speculated may have been unrelated to the story that they had to work in. <laughs> What is your game? Killing people? I didn't kill anybody. You were there and you saw what happened. You beat him to death. I did not. The guy was alive when we left the yacht. I only told the police what I saw. Bullshit. The cops are saying you saw me kill the guy. It's a clear exchange of information. <laughs> I'm very happy about this. <laughs> Just get right down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> Explain your positions very clearly. Yeah. Come on. Oh, oh, she's out of there. Why isn't she taking her own car? <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, he was the one that wanted to change cars. What the fuck difference does it make to her? Because that's a better car, okay? <laughs> uh, we haven't talked much about the main plot of this movie. Go right ahead. Tell, tell, talk about the main plot because oh, I don't no, know what uh, it is. What I'm saying is, Rich, Rich made a very detailed rundown, which is a lot of. I only got halfway things. through. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I don't even know if you got halfway. You just got to like the first act. <laughs> well, but you explained the ending stuff first, which is in a, in a different movie. That would be the way the story is told, so we understand what's happening. Oh yeah. Because we were confused the whole way through this movie, and then at the end they dump all the information on you, and you're like, oh. It, now it kind of makes sense. In terms of uh, uh, us as an audience identifying with a character and or their arc, i.e. Rick Shaw. Well, what the fuck was I supposed to do? Just go ahead and let that porno freak film my bare ass? They paid better. 
Didn't you know that? No, I didn't know that. No, Rick Sherrill is just like a pawn in this other story. So he, he's, a, point, he's a bad protagonist. Yes. He's our main character, and he does almost nothing so relevant. So where is our narrative arc? Where is our plot? It's the witch and Donald Pleasance. It's all the witch. Yeah. The, witch. These, the B plot to this movie is our main character's plot, which is him trying to clear his name for the murder of televangelist's son. Yeah. After an incredibly uh, awkward and toxic love story. I've got nothing to say to you. Get out or I'll scream. If you scream, I swear to God I'm gonna stick you with this thing, all right? I found it in the gutter. I'm sure you're familiar with AIDS. All right, yeah. I'm sure you're familiar with AIDS. He found it in the gutter. That's a decent threat. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> Drive the car or I'll give you it, AIDS. It is bizarre. Oh, yeah. That is rich Italian. <laughs> <laughs> Look, all I know is that this couple, they overcame a lot of obstacles. He threatened to give her AIDS. <laughs> she, she threatened to accuse him of rape. <laughs> Take it easy. You make a move, and I might have you arrested for rape. Whoa! whoa. <laughs> Jesus! He did just flat out belt her the first time That's they met. True. Oh, was that a flirtatious line? That is, yeah, that was yeah. That is flirting why, with the why, idea why, of rape. Why? 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 why, why, why? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing about that makes any well, sense. Because shoes were already wet when they well, got in there. Multiple yeah, takes. Yeah, second take. Yeah. You're right. They had quite the roller coaster relationship. This is marriage story all over again. It's yeah, it's yeah, lots oh, of ups she, and downs. She, she, yeah, she threatened to accuse him of rape. Yeah. yeah. But no, you're incredibly right. He has no, no. Uh, he doesn't do anything. He's a, he's a stagnant, boring protagonist, Rick yeah. Shaw. He and saves the day in the end when the bad guy gets himself hit by a truck. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh, somebody ran over a dummy. Chinese mysticism turned him into a dummy. Yes, this guy is... Like, He's useless! What, Literally, she just needs someone who can walk. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's his job. You have the power of the tiger. I'm in a wheelchair. Yes. And the bad guy only got hit by a truck because the witch made a snake appear. Yeah. She also made the, him so he couldn't hold the key. That's right. Mm -hmm. The witch did everything. The witch did everything. Oh, that's neat. Whoa! Oh, God. That's cool. Why did that happen? What the heck is going on here? She made the key melt through uh, uh, Guy's hands yeah. and land on like a tile floor and melt through the tile floor. Yeah. But she couldn't open the safety deposit box <laughs> in the lobby. Like with of, magical of powers? Yeah. 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 Well, it needed a key. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair. My dear friend, my name is Madame Moon. I am the woman you helped in the rain about six months ago. Read the fucking <laughs> Just note! Fucking read it! Who cares about these kids? Pick up the note! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I just read the fucking note! That's all you gotta do! Read the fucking note! Starring uh, Olympic athlete Mitch Gaylord. I uh, don't know if you know this about Mitch Gaylord. Uh, he is in the Olympic Hall of Fame. He is in the Jewish Athletes Hall of Fame. And he, uh, according to IMDb Trivia, invented two moves to be performed on the high bar in the gymnastics competition, uh, both named after himself, uh, the Gaylord Flip and the Gaylord Two. <laughs> The the Gaylord flip is of course when you when you take a straight boy and show him a good time. Oh, <laughs> oh. And the That's Gaylord a, two is the McNamara brothers. <laughs> there you go. Is when you is when you do, go on an ATV ride. <laughs> <laughs> on a on a, on a three wheeled ATV with one seat. So moving on to our third film, uh, Phobe, the xenophobic experiments. Mike, what can you say about what we watched to Phobe? Oh, I could say that it was boring uh, and it, it sucked. 
Uh, Jay, you said this was recommended to us by... This, this was recommended by Colin from Canada. Yes. And the, and which the made us two Canadian films tonight. Right, right, right. Sandwich, uh, Canadian-American sandwich. Literally American. But but uh, the backstory of this is some girl... So, Erica Benedicti. In the 90s, made a movie who worked... She worked at... Uh, Canadian television station, public access TV station, made a crappy uh, DIY science fiction film for like a hundred bucks yep. and it played on Canadian airwaves for years to fill dead air. Yeah. And so it became a cult sensation as claimed on the back of the box. Uh, so Colin maybe has fond memories of it. But we don't. <laughs> It's it's on that horrible feeders level. Yes. Any 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 movie on on that level of amateurishness, it needs something special to be worthy of discussion. Yeah. Like like the Black Cobra versus the White Fox. Yeah. That has that that's something special. S similar level of production, but it's so crazy. Yes. Yeah. This and this is we got in. There was like 15 minutes of two rednecks with mullets wandering around the woods. Yeah. And then we were like, we're done. There is some yeah. kind of alien mask and monster. There, there and may be, later in the movie, there may be a really amazing laser fight or something, I don't know. We couldn't get there. We did, we, yeah, we were like, we're, we're done. So what's the radio for? Well, that's just so I can call for some backup. So I can fool, fool my world, and that way when, once I catch the fold, I can leave this planet, and hopefully your world will be safe forever. We had to stop it because we couldn't <laughs> fuck take it anymore. <laughs> and we replaced it with a movie that we had watched on a previous movie night. Just a few days earlier. Just a little bit earlier. <laughs> Infested. <laughs> a movie that we just watched that we were we were we were kind we of hooked on. We had a lot of I don't even want to say quick questions. questions. Where do we start? Infested is... Well, let's get the story out of the way first. The actual plot of the movie. Okay. It's The Big Chill <laughs> meets Night of the Living Dead meets... What was that one with the bugs in the 90s? The killer bugs? Ar arachnophobia? Wasn't there... Well, I guess arachnophobia is a better choice. Yeah. Well, the idea of... Because, the, yeah, they, these, you know, this group gets together for a funeral and they all hang out in a house. That's the big chill element. And then, yeah, flies get into their mouth and it, like, takes over their bodies, right? Yeah. They turn into little, little like, bug zombies. Yeah. Effectively, they turn into zombies, yes. Yeah. And that's, that's uh, well, that's uh, specifically, I was thinking of Night of the Creeps. That's, they're little slug monsters in that, but they get into your mouth and they infect your brain yeah. and they control your body and you're basically a zombie. Cindy! Brad's here! Uh, a couple of generic uh, horror movie premises. Yeah. Mixed with some some '90s drama rom-com premises, friends, Gen X commentary, Gen kind of. X. When is the last time any of you listened to one of these babies? Yeah, there's a couple of late '90s, early 2000s uh, things going on. <laughs> And all cell phones, huh? How about that? How about that? <laughs> I can't get a signal. Uh, and, I think uh, like that's the biggest starting point, which is this looks as if it is an episode. It, it's like a Halloween episode of Friends. Mm -hmm. That is the budgetary feel of it. The movie opens with uh, two tickets to Paradise by Eddie Money. All the landmarks of New York City in 2002. Um, you know, there's Radio City Music Hall. You know, there's uh, Times Square. There's a bunch of smoking rubble. There's... Uh, uh, and, then, and then we discovered during this montage, in, uh, everyone's get, What is so funny? Nothing. Nothing's funny. What is... It's Eddie Money. Uh, Two Tickets to Paradise is a good song. I don't know what the... Fuck, you're laughing at. Two towers, two tickets to paradise. Is it all connected? Two dragons. Twin dragons. Twin dragons. Whoa. Oh my god. The Mac Manera brothers caused 9 11. <laughs> the Macrame brothers. <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got, 
This is a horror movie. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, you're infested. You're right. This, this is great. The one where the gang runs into killer bugs. <laughs> <laughs> but everyone's getting phone calls that... Some, something has happened. They look devastated by And I guess that's supposed to be a amusing contrast between the Two Tickets to Paradise song and them getting the devastating news that their friend is dead. Yeah. Is that I, intentionally funny? I think so. Okay. That's, that's another question. Well, it could be a literal ticket to paradise. <laughs> well, like heaven? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You're reading way too much into this. <laughs> <laughs> they, they went on the discount website to get the cheapest music rights. Guys, we can get the real Eddie Money. What's song. wait? Yeah, what's the cheapest real song we can license? <laughs> uh, um, Thanks, Google. Eddie Money will will sell you two tickets to Paradise for a sync license to your feature <laughs> film for five hundred bucks. Woohoo! Did he have the the Eddie Money two tickets to Paradise deal where you get two Eddie Money songs? <laughs> there are the two Eddie Money songs in the film. <laughs> 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 Two tickets to paradise. Okay, no, this is immediately 100 times more interesting. <laughs> the big question is, is this a comedy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's where you were leading up Yeah, to. that's... Is this a comedy? And why are these specific actors in this? Yeah. I, I think it's a horror film that's meant to have comedic moments. Similar to like a Shaun of the Dead, but not as comedic as Shaun of the Dead. Right. Because Shaun of the Dead's a real horror movie. It's just also really funny. Mm -hmm. And this has a couple moments that feel like they're trying to be kind of winking at the genre. A couple of moments, a but couple not moments. enough. Not enough. Um, but then going into the actors, yeah, that's the real mystery of this film is that it's so cheap, but it has a lot of, not A-listers, but a lot of professional actors in Solid it. Solid talent. Yes. And they're all, they're all given it their all. And not necessarily like washed up talent who are like drunk on the set. <laughs> There's no Donald Pleasance in this film. <laughs> Mike. You've got Tom Paris, fresh off of Voyager. He hasn't been he hasn't been out of work for five years, and that Voyager money's drying up. He like just finished filming the fucking series, and he's on the set to infest it. Mm -hmm. Robert Duncan McNeil, uh, Zach Galligan from Gremlins, uh, Amy Jo Johnson, who most people will know as the Pink Ranger, and Rich, you you recognized a guy from V. <laughs> That was the most fucking amazing it thing. It was driving me nuts. We watched this like a week ago, and I'm like, I know him from somewhere. And he kind of looks like the actor from the Daredevil TV series, but a little bloated. You, you said that, and I thought, oh, maybe I'm just thinking of the Daredevil guy. Yes. And then just out of nowhere, it fucking hit me, because earlier today, Jay, you mentioned that you have the original V miniseries on DVD somewhere, and you I'm haven't watched it yet. I'm and I haven't watched it yet. And yeah. that was in the back of my head, and I just made the connection. <laughs> Isn't that amazing when that happens? Yeah. Come on, Eric. Can't you just live in the real world for just one fucking second? Just one? What, you mean the one where the government actually respects human life? And where they never, ever, ever experiment with deadly viruses? Oh, yeah, I would love to live in that one. Jerking off. <laughs> Can we figure a way out of this? These three guys, they're, they're taking it serious. They're all trying. Yeah. Everybody's kind of trying. Yeah. And before we get into the, the really... Wait, one more actor. Oh. We have one more actor. Yeah. Who's our other actor? Alas, your fantasies for me Created from your dreams Rum Lazar. And we happen to have an official <laughs> Rem Lazar action I don't, I don't think it's official. <laughs> oh. I don't think that's an officially released action figure. That it has our logo on the front of it. That looks just like Rem Lazar. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Keep away from small children and acetone. <laughs> so, so this is something a fan made I for us. Yeah. That's great. That's so great. But we have a Rem Lazar action figure now. Uh, Rem Lazar was on a Wheel of the Worst episode yes uh, yeah and, that was a weird yeah and it's a creepy uh, uh 
pilot of a children's show about a We're mysterious... We're not hundred percent sure what the fuck it is, yeah. but it's really fucking weird. Yeah, so, the, so but the actor who played Rem Lazar appears in Infested. Jack Mulcahy is his name. That's right, Jay. Uh, so you got Tom Paris, yeah. aka Robert Duncan McNeil, mm -hmm. Zach Galligan, Amy Jo Johnson, aka the Pink Ranger for the Power Rangers. We got the kid who was in V. <laughs> we got Rem Lazar, and then and then we have sixteen other white people. <laughs> Uh, ladies that we lost track of. Yeah. Is that the same lady? A lady with a wig on? A lady who goes swimming? In That's the never nude? explained. The wig, by the way. The wig. It's a, obviously a wig. I assumed at one point she was going to get like the bugs were going to eat her hair off or something. There'd be some explanation as to why she's wearing a wig, and it never happens. Yeah, she, Jay, she has cancer. Oh. Her dying wish was to be in, infested. <laughs> Aww, well, you did it. She wanted, to, she wanted to be in a movie with Zach Gallagher. Uh, <laughs> Gallagher. Gallagher. Zach, Zach Gallagher is Gallagher's younger brother. That's, yeah, that's the guy who smashes the watermelons. He smashes gremlins with a big melon. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, all these other people, who knows, like there was that guy, we looked up, I was like, is that guy and Ben and stuff? And you looked him up and he's like, oh, he's Ben and he's oh, working chin. at. Oh, and Chin, all yeah. the Chin are all like, they're, all they're the, on the, every TV show every year. Yeah. Yeah. Lady with the wig, lady with the curly hair. Lady Even the, the priest at the beginning, he's in a bunch of Darren Aronofsky movies. Yeah. Yeah. So, that leads us, we have, we have a, a, a cast, not necessarily like an A-list, all-star, you know, powerhouse cast but people who have been in real things in something that looks like a made-for-TV sci-fi channel original shot on VHS. Yeah, it's, it was shot on film. We looked it up after the fact. You're right. Let's go to the car with torches. Lights kill him. Fire's going to scare the shit out of him. Let's make some fire. <laughs> oh, he, you know he fought for that one. Like, come on, let me say it. I want the camera to push in on yeah. it. <laughs> and I want to say, fuck yeah. So here's, here's my first speculation then. Are these all people who just know each other in the business and just as a lark, let's get together this weekend and we'll make a movie? Well, there is a connection because the movie's directed by a guy named, written and directed by a guy named Josh Olson, who right after this movie wrote the critically acclaimed David Cronenberg film, A History of Violence. <laughs> Which is the last movie released on VHS. You're making it look like it's about that specifically. Yeah, Twin Dragon this Encounter is a VHS page. tape. <laughs> it's also Twin Dragon Encounter. Yeah. Also... No, but famously, A History of Violence was the last movie to be mass produced on VHS. Ah, um, okay. But Josh Olson uh, is, is, you know, he directed this film with Zach Galligan, but he currently hosts a podcast with Joe Dante, who directed Gremlins. Mm -hmm. Oh. I don't know. So he apparently knows people in the industry. And Zach Galligan appeared on an episode of Star Trek Voyager. And you can only assume that the convention circuit would feature Amy Jo Johnson and Tom Paris. Mm -hmm. Is the V guy also doing that low end convention circuit? No, oh, that could be. That was in V 30 years ago. <laughs> He's doing commercials for Viagra. Viagra? <laughs> Close your mouth! <laughs> I love, like, I just, I think this is a fascinating idea. It's like, what if we shot a horror movie? All during the day, <laughs> in one location, with fifty dollars. It was like a bet with the <laughs> with the budget of one episode of a television show. Yeah. <laughs> can you do it? Uh, what's his name? Josh Olson. Yeah. Josh Olson. Can you do it? And then you know, like, we'll replay this on the Sci Fi Channel. Like, yeah. You got. You have fifty bucks. Was there a bet? Because we speculated on a bet. And Joe Dante is like, kind of like, like he's smoking a cigarette. He's looking over his shoulder. He's like, no, 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 <laughs> a little more blood there. Well, and Joe Dante's like, I started out with Roger Corman. I know I can make a movie in a weekend. Right. He's, he's, he's off to the side judging whether or not what they're making qualifies as a good enough film. Because <laughs> <laughs> the, mo the movie is consistently competent. 
it's bad, but it's never, it, it always feels like it's about to fall into like amateur movie territory, they but were it never does. Out, they were running out of time when they did the effects. It was like, that's, it was that's, like 11 p.m. on Sunday night by the time <laughs> they got around to the CGI flies. Yeah, that's, that's where the movie falls apart is those post-production visual effects are fucking terrible. <laughs> Didn't we theorize that the... We think they had a bad fake head, so they blurred it out so it wouldn't look as bad. Sure. Now it just looks horribly distracting. Add, add motion blur to it and make it look better, <laughs> yeah. The, the really strange thing about this movie is it takes place, like, at noon. It's just during the day, and so some of the horror elements come across as comedic. Yeah. Well, that also ties in with the idea of them having to make this movie over a weekend because, you know, obviously shoot at night, you need lights, it takes time. Shoot during the day, you don't have to worry about that. You just use daylight. I think the, the biggest and, and mo I think most shocking thing is, is the level of quality, it, even in 2002, of the swarm of CGI flies. And I never thought I'd say that sentence in my whole life. We're talking about 2002. 40 years after Steven Spielberg made Jurassic Park, this film came out, right? And Steven Spielberg wowed audiences with a real life Tyrannosaurus Rex. And in 2002, they can't even get a swarm of flies correct. And Look, then, if the CGI guy had three days to do it, it makes sense. <laughs> okay, if, if they spent 99.9% uh, .9 of their budget on everything else, and then just said, flies, how hard could that be? And then, the, oh my God, you want how much money? To do swarms of CGI flies? Oh, I thought it was gonna I be I quoted you a price for one fly. I didn't know you needed swarms. <laughs> 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 it times it by a hundred thousand. <laughs> oh my God, you want eleven $1 hundred dollars? <laughs> but but yeah yeah. Oh God. Oh, it's so bad. It's so bad. Well, it's also confusing. We were talking about the fact that most of the movie was shot during the day, and we discovered at a certain point that the flies die from the sunlight almost from, instantly from almost any instantly light. even from, though oh, we... from any light even lamps did you see that they just flared out yeah, maybe maybe it's the light even though they're flying around in broad daylight well that's yeah the first scene where we see them they're swarming they fly out of the infected person person's mouth during the day yep they added that plot element later that was something they thought After of later in the weekend yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, you th do you think it was lynching and they were writing it as they were shooting it it could be i mean if you only have a weekend you just got to keep moving not nobody none of them made it under the box before it connected with the floor and apparently not not even one Later in the movie, Tom Paris saves himself with a cardboard box. Yes. No. Disgust. <laughs> a couple of the, the flies get into that box, but not, not uh, surprisingly few. Uh, it, it, the, the, is it a refrigerator box? Because his yeah. career is on ice? Oh! Damn, wow. that's cold. Uh, <laughs> what a cheap ass movie. <laughs> 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 like a literal cardboard box is a prop. But how cheap was the talent relative to the rest of the movie is the question. That's, that's the big thing around this movie is, you know, the, the, the bar graph, like, like budget to talent or what, you know, they're getting paid. They're getting paid. And they're getting paid pretty well comparatively to like a, like a, a no budget, like uh, uh, me and my friends shot this in my backyard kind of thing, which right. is which is what the movie has the feel of. It has the feel of, even yeah. though it's shot on film. There was some thought because there's like a the, the the ticking clock element is that the sun is going down, and when the sun goes down, even though these bugs get killed by light of any kind, even lamps, so, if the sun goes down, they're going to get us. 
I but there they, is. I think that there's a throwaway line in there somewhere of all they need to do is cut the power then. The sun will be going down soon. Now, if they're smart enough to disable the cars, they're smart enough to cut the power in the house. But there is, so the sun is going down throughout the movie and you do see at certain points, there's like pretty harsh light coming through the, the windows. There's longer shadows going across like the living room. So there was some sort of thought put into like where the sun would be at that time. And they did the lighting yeah. accordingly. Yeah. yeah. Or because they shot this in a weekend, the sun was just actually going down when they were filming. <laughs> the, the later in the day stuff does look better than when they first arrive at the that, house. That initial outdoor fight when they're first infected yeah. is so bad. We speculated uh, selling this, uh, like a cheap cash grab to sell it to the sci-fi channel for like, uh, you, uh, uh, we, we made just a little bit of money, we're done, we're out. Yeah. What, what do you guys think? Put it, on, put it on a DVD, it's on the shelf on Blockbuster. Oh, I know those names, I'm going to rent that movie, I know those names. Are there names on the cover? I... No. I, no? Not, no faces, no names. What the They were selling this 100% on the bugs. What the <laughs> fuck? It's nothing but bugs. It's got to be sci-fi original then. They have to be trying to sell this to a cable But there's network. boobs and F-bombs. What if what, this is what? just a passion project for Josh Olsen? What if he really wanted to make this story? <laughs> <laughs> this very original and very creative story. <laughs> But it, could it be the, the cart going before the horse, as the saying goes? Don't put the cart before the horse. Don't put and the rickshaw before the gaylord. Don't put the rickshaw before the gaylord. Um, <laughs> as in, <laughs> yeah, good, good one, Jay. Uh, 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 the, 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 the movie rental houses that be said, can you pr provide us with a film in 60 days that we could put on our shelves. Here's here's five hundred thousand dollars. Make your movie. We don't care what it looks like. We just want content. And it has to have three or four main names. Boom. Done. Ah. Look out! Look out! Look out. Oh. <laughs> I'll jump, but only six inches. <laughs> Unless you get me a stunt double. We'll put it in slow motion. It'll look great. We learned it from these Canadian twin filmmakers. It's too absurd to be true, but the thing that almost makes the most sense is the high-end version of a 48-hour film challenge. <laughs> but that is way too absurd to be true. Yeah, in the real world, it's not. it couldn't happen. Where there was a literal bet. <laughs> I, I, that did, going back to Roger Corman, that did happen. The original Little Shop of Horrors was a bet. Feed me more. All right. I bet you can't make a movie in two days, I think it was, because they had some sets already existing. Challenge so, met. Yeah. It's possible. We don't know. And jo Joe Dante lost a lot of money. I'm <laughs> 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 sitting there okay. watching, the, watching the production. Shit. <laughs> They're gonna, they're gonna pull this off. They're gonna, they're gonna fail when it comes to the flies. They're gonna fail. They went for the. Oh, uh, they got it done. <laughs> it's just competent enough. Just enough. Yeah, no, and cut out and cut out the swears and the boobs and sell it to Sci-Fi later, I guess. Sci-Fi passed. <laughs> sci <laughs> <laughs> That's saying something. <laughs> we, we can't crack it. We can't crack the code. Normally, why does this movie exist? Normally. If you know why this movie exists, please contact us. Yeah. Oh. Ah! <laughs>well we're at the point of the night where we pick best of the worst uh we'll start in the end rich i think i am going with american rickshaw mike uh well i loved every movie <laughs> uh with except with the, for phobe uh I, I i love little things about everything uh but i i i i have to go with american rickshaw as well not only for the stunning 2K transfer from the original camera negative. Yeah, it looked great. Uh, it's amazing uh, and it's baffling. I, 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 I have lots of questions about that, about that infested movie. 
I have so many questions. You'll never get answers. But the thing is, Infested isn't, it's not terribly entertaining to watch. No, which is why it's, it's not It's not hilariously list, bad. Yeah. It's not, uh, you know, it, like we kept said, it's competent. So it's one where it's more, we're just fascinated by why it exists. If, if you're just it falls between the cracks of all yeah. the usual best of the worst stuff. Yeah, it, it has a weird placement. American rickshaw. Yeah. Nobody's running around the woods in American rickshaw. It's wild. Yes. It's a wild ride, American rickshaw. Absolutely. I'll, I'll say you know, points to Infested for engaging us in a different way. <laughs> but uh, I will take Demon Pig bursting out of human skin. <laughs> American rickshaw gets my best of the worst. Then it's unanimous. Uh, I loved American rickshaw. That was one of those where have you been all my life moments. Where I was like, this is great. Well, the, well, the question is, do we want? To, what's the worst? Do we want to destroy anything, Rich? Phob, come on! What, what? Phob, we can't destroy Phob. We didn't watch it all. Under, that that breaks the rules. That's what's on the table, sir. Except for the Rumble is our action well, figure. <laughs> I mean, no one's Obviously, going for we're that. not going to destroy yeah. that. If foam is off the table, we're not destroying anything. These are all great in their own right. Mm. I, I, for one, want to take Twin Dragon Encounter and break it in two. <laughs> <laughs> Saw it in two. <laughs> so we have twins? Saw it in two with an actual rickshaw, which we have. Mike, that's not a rickshaw. That's a ricksaw. Oh, ricksaw. <laughs> a ricksaw. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> you just pull that H out, and you got a rick saw. Oh! Well, that went much easier than I thought it would, eh? I'm gonna get 